All right, so the last couple episodes, I've been focusing on um, either planner tracking or corner pinning. And I think all of that information has brought us to what we're about to do today, which is uh, kind of taking all of that and applying it to something like this, which um, says copycat because if you've been around long enough, you'll know that years ago, uh, this effect was done using the warper um, and morphing techniques in Flame uh, via the desktop. Uh, just as a side note, the warper is not in the in batch, and I I wish it were. Um, but anyway, it's still a desktop operation. So anyway, this effect was done. Uh, 25 years later, I wanted to see how we could do it um, a little bit more efficiently, quickly, and uh, using kind of these tools. Um, so I just wanted to point out though that uh, while we're going to do it very manually, um, I did do it using the motion analysis and motion vectors. So uh, if you haven't done something uh, using this technique just real quickly and just kind of give you a quick overview and then we can do it some other time if we have an interest in that is that uh, I set up the motion vector I cache the motion vector and then I project uh, the painted frame onto our motion analysis just wanted to point out real quickly that I did it twice because uh, and I'll just context between the two because you'll see all this like tearing and smearing that came from one of the iterations of it. And that's because it um, had a hard time separating the foreground from the background. And so I ended up having to pre-multiply the uh, texture that I wanted tracked. So that way I didn't have any of that other kind of cheetah skin uh, smearing and tearing um, as the analysis was kind of being done. So uh, at the heart of it though, this is the same effect that we're gonna create today, but we're gonna do it using the extended by cubic and some UV um, tracking and vertices um, tracking. So let's get started. Uh, I painted, there's a lot, and again, there's lots of ways to do this. This is one way. Uh, I'm not going to go into every way, and there's a lot of ways you can navigate to get the same effect, even if you're doing extended by cubics. So let me just say that. Um, this is just a painted frame that I have. So I grabbed a lion, I have our cheetah, and uh, yeah, it's just a quick painted frame with an alpha that we will use as the foundation. So start with a new action. And here we're just going to set up our track. So I can use the background for this. Um, and we'll make it an extended by cubic. Now, a few things I just want to point out. If I drag these vertices right now, uh, what you'll see is very much um, uh, everything will start to shift into place and this will be distorted. Uh, that's what we want. But again, we want to be in our object view so that we can move this uh, without affecting, um, so we can see what we're doing. So now when I move this here, you'll see it unwrap over in our result view, but not in our object view. If I wanted to do it a different way, just so you can see it, if I hit shift in U, we're gonna go into the move UV and vertex. So now if I move this um, vertice, you'll see that it updates over here and is not unwrapping. So you can do this either way. This is just how we are going to do it today. I'm just gonna leave it in the default move mode because that's what happens when you enter in for the first time. So what do we need to do? We need to kind of set a patch um, of the area we wanna track. So we will do that. I can move these into place. I will end up subdividing this uh, at some point but let me just get the vertices into rough position. And this will bring up the first thing I wanna kind of mention, which is I find it very frustrating that the uh, vertices don't kind of auto correct. So we get these weird squiggles um, and that makes it very hard to kind of get the shape I want. So just so you know, there's an auto adjust uh, toggle that you can have. So everything will start to snap a little bit differently and with a little bit more ease as I, let me just move this over a little bit, as I um, 
set my shape. So we're going to end up subdividing this. And again, I'm just going to try to follow the contours of this a little bit. I want to stick as close to kind of a tracker or what I would think is going to be a tracker because all these vertices are going to end up uh, being where the tracker is located initially. And we can do an offset reference, but probably is still helpful, especially for a tutorial uh, to be pretty close um, just so I don't have to overwork it. I mean, our I'm really only focused on this area right here, but let's just see how close I can get without embarrassing myself with some bad tracks. Uh, okay, we're gonna subdivide again. And if you've subdivided and you realize that that was a mistake, you can hit merge and it will um, take away the subdivision. Uh, so now we're still just moving points into place. And these I probably will hit on. Obviously, I want to kind of follow the, I guess, the curve of the body, but again, for today's purposes, I'll leave that one. It's not going to be so important. Okay, feel free to speed this part up if you need to. Now, one thing that I think is worth pointing out is that if we are going to track this, uh, if I go in with all the trackers, it's going to be overwhelming and it's a lot and I'm going to turn them off and I'll start to go into each one and it, it feels like it's going to take, um, be a, somewhat overwhelming, especially if I have more subdivisions. Uh, and if I was doing this for a real production, I'd probably have more subdivisions. So one thing that I might recommend is maybe just doing it in segments, either by like rows or columns. And so just know that you can go in and just do um, just a few at a time and it'll still store the tracking data and then you can kind of come back and you can refine this as you need to but this is also an easier way for me to kind of check what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to move through this pretty quickly so uh, this one I am going to set an offset reference so I'm going to hit the O key and now I have an offset reference so we're just going to end up changing this will be where our tracker is located but we're going to actually track from a different location just to um, just so these all stick. We'll do it for here too. And I'm going to try to track all of these at one time. Um, I don't know how successful I'll be. And so now I'll just hit analyze forward. Okay, great. So let's see how that holds up. So, I mean, this one could certainly be better. I'm not going to worry about it for now, but that is the foundation of what we're doing. We'll go and select another row, go to tracker each point, activate them, and on the first frame, and we'll just do the same thing with the offset reference, just make sure that I am, oops, uh, let's make my reference a little bit smaller. Uh, this one's good. Move this one over a little bit and move this one over just a little bit as well. And then we're going to analyze all of these. And I'm not looking for super precision right now, just kind of the proof concept, but that looks pretty good. So now next row, I'm going to track for each point, turn on gang. Uh, one might be okay, that one's okay. Seems fine. Uh, I don't know if the leg's gonna cross over here. Let's see what happens. It also seemed pretty good. So, I mean, obviously what you're seeing is it's everything is just kind of mapping to uh, the skin of the cheetah. And this is exactly what we want. One more row. This is definitely going to get a little tricky, but again, just going to move that over, move this over. Uh, that leg will certainly become an option, a problem. I'm going to go pretty far in. I might have to tackle this one a little bit manually. Let's see if it fails. Uh, it seems okay. So, I mean, Good enough for, for right now. 
Uh, and now we'll do our final bottom row. Uh, there we go. Uh, okay, we're gonna shoot some of these up. Just trying to stay on the same general plane. Uh, this one probably will be tricky. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't enough. Uh, yeah, in a perfect world, this would be probably a little bit more um, following kind of the interior of the body and not, not kind of free-floating out here. Same with this one, but let's see how it maps because, again, I just want to go over the exercise more so than the perfection of it. You'll see this is our kind of unwrapped texture. So, like, you could do this a couple ways. I could uh, kind of work with this and paste everything on this kind of full screen view, kind of as if I was what I did in corner pin the other day. But to show the alternate, uh, even though it's set up this way right now, we are going to go ahead and use this kind of texture that I've already worked with. So no need to undo what I've done because I've already set it up. Uh, so with that in mind, we'll just have to change our order of operations just a little bit. So now I'm going to add that texture. Uh, I am going to assign it because we were tracking on the background, but now we want to assign our media layer, which is here. Let me go back to it to view so you can see exactly what's going on. So this is, can be a little bit tricky because right now we have a frozen image with uh, all our tracking data that is not moving. Um, and then we have our kind of unwrapped UV. So what we need to do, just like in corner pinning, um, when I was kind of showing this, the, the nature of this workflow, we need to send our UV points to the vertices. So I've now clicked UV points to vertices. And now you see that all the points are now tracked onto the surface of the cheetah, uh, but obviously we don't have our texture in place. So uh, what I need to do is basically kill the keyframes that are on this cheetah in our object view because I don't um, have any kind of motion to go with it. So we really, almost like a projection, I'm, I just want to keep the first frame of this. So we're going to go to the UV track shape and I just want to keep the first frame. So I'm going to hit keep. And now what you'll see is the this is locked. And if I go back to just our result view and just play this through, we now have our copycat uh, mapped using our extended by cubics uh, nicely. Now what you'll see, you see this area right here, that's an issue. So how do we get around that? Well, there's also another tool that is pretty helpful in our uh, surface options, which is an expansion um, extrapolation. So when I start winding this up, you'll see that it will um, go beyond the boundaries of the extended by cubic. And this way we're basically getting our alpha channel that had that nice uh, blurred edge uh, being kind of considered. So uh, the tracking is still the same, but we're just kind of expanding the boundaries like a bleed. So now everything is sitting nice and softly. Uh, again, if I need to like go in and manipulate any of these, um, all that tracking data is still here, I can go back at any time and refine the, any of these tracks. I can go back in, you know, I said this one was maybe a little bit of a problem. I could go back in and fix that one. But again, I'd have to kind of reset the UVs and uh, keep the frame and, and do all of that stuff. Uh, so I'd like to be somewhat certain by the time I get to that point. Um, otherwise, it's just a little bit more legwork just to kind of uh, re-engineer um, parts of this. Now, if we compare between our uh, motion analysis option and our kind of UV track, um, let's kind of see what we have. So 
first frame is exactly the same because that's what I used as the painted frame. Here are the two end frames. And let's see, we have one, which is, this is the bicubic, and this is the motion analysis. Now, one thing I'm definitely seeing, the motion analysis definitely has some tearing inside the texture. So as the texture is being projected, Definitely is not holding up as well. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's getting a, definitely a little bit kind of uh, uh, digital and it's getting somewhat uh, full of artifacts and imperfections. Um, so I would say in this particular case, I would argue that the UV is probably the smoother way to go and the one that obviously gives me more control. Uh, I could, just like anything, if I was bent on using the motion analysis, I could make it work. I can soften it. I, there's things I can do to that as well to clean this up. I didn't spend any time on it aside from just putting in the projection and uh, letting it go. So uh, it's not to say I can't refine it, but I think it's really important that whether you do corner pinning versus planar tracking or you do extended by cubic and some uh, UV tracking um, over motion analysis or vice versa. I think it's really helpful to know the foundation of these tools and how to use them because uh, what you get from this is the ability to um, edit your work and make adjustments as needed. So if I need to you know, this is happening. If I, I could still end up doing manual adjustments or keyframes to this if I need to. And I think that's really helpful um, so that you can have just a little bit more control over what you're doing. Um, and I think that's kind of what you get with the flexibility. Let me exaggerate that just so you can really see that things were happening. So that can be animated on top of the tracking. Uh, and I think that's, um, just a really good position to be in when you need control, you need flexibility, you need speed, and you need accuracy. So I hope that this um, gives you just a little bit of foundation and uh, I'm really happy to kind of dive in deeper or uh, put a little bit more thought or explanation into it so that you get a full understanding of this type of workflow and what it may or may not be able to do for you in the future. Thank you so much and um, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.